Let's talk a little bit about resistivity in the, the data table and the actual procedure taking the data. On these computers, uh, there's class support and lab 2, and inside here is resistivity, and there's an Excel file. This Excel file should also be found online that you can just download it from there. Also on these computers, inside class support, lab 2, there's a cover sheet. All the experiments are in one file for the cover sheet. So down here you can see resistivity, Ohm's law, here's O-scope, RC, induction, E over M. And the idea is that you can save this file into a um, space on Dropbox, somewhere where you have access to it, and get everybody's names. And the instructor name and the lab station number, which by the way is written on each computer in this room, um, we go from 11, 12, 13, and we go around the room to 18 over here. That lab station is important. Um, so you want to write down the lab station number and everybody's name, and it should be sorted alphabetically, alphabetically, alphabetically by last name. Uh, it's important to write down the date that you took the data and your instructor's name, and then you can just print this cover sheet. So this is the template created for you. In lab two, I need you to make you aware of a pitfall, um, and it's here on purpose. We've done a lot of work in preparing these templates. Uh, to get something this well organized takes time, and we've wanted to save students that time. We want you to be focusing on the actual data and the analysis, and not exactly on where it should go on the page. And so we provided these templates for you. We figure that by the time you're in lab two, you should understand very well the importance of units, dimensions that every single measurement we take is going to have a dimension to it, a unit. Well, okay, some measurements or calculations might not have a unit, um, such as N, the index of refraction this semester, okay? But in general, all these things are going to have units. Therefore, in all of the spreadsheet templates for Lab 2, there are missing units and there are improper units and we put them there or left them out purposefully to cause you to pay attention to this file. If I remember correctly, there are three instances in this particular template where either there's a missing unit or a wrong unit. So you need to study this sheet very carefully. Uh, the typical deduction is two points for every wrong or missing unit. So I know there might be some moans and groans right now, but that's just the real world. We need to, whenever we take a measurement or deal with a measurement, we need to know the unit of measure. And so by default, everything that's written on here should have a unit, and you should make sure that it's the right one. This first data table up here is for measuring the various lengths of the wire. Here's our resistivity board. These wires are not soldered. They are simply held on with pressure, and I don't want you touching these wires. We don't want your oils to get on the wires, and we don't want you to stretch the wires. So don't play guitar. Don't even take the probe and, and pinch the wire with a metal, with a metal alligator clip. Uh, we've positioned posts on this board for you to attach the alligator clips. So please be careful with that. It's hard for some reason, maybe because I'm saying so, but it's hard for some reason for students to take, to get a grasp on this first part of the experiment, the measurement. What you want to do is measure the resistance for various lengths on this top wire. And what we want the length to do is to increase with each measurement. The first measurement is going to be putting the alligator clip at the end here and then measuring the, resi the resistance at this point. The second measurement is measuring the resistance at this point. The third measurement is here, fourth, and fifth is at the end of the board. So we've left one of the alligator clip, I'm having a hard time with that word, at the end here, and we've moved the other alligator clip successfully, successively down the board. Now we've got a problem. That's pretty easy to measure the resistance in increasing lengths. The problem is that these bolts have nuts and washers. And those bolts and nuts and washers have dimension 
that are a lot bigger than the wire. And guess what happens when the wire hits that washer, that metal washer? The current goes through that system and shows up at the other end with less resistance inside there. In other words, this will make sense, hopefully, we've increased the paths of conductivity right there at the bolt. So we don't want to include the dimension of this bolt in our lengths. To circumvent that problem, we're going to measure the length here between the, the initial point and this washer. And we're measuring that side of the washer. Then we're going to measure this short length. What's the length for this resistance from the initial point to the second bolt? The resistance is measured, but the length is the sum of these two sections. Then we want to find this little section, and we want to find this section and this section. That is the essence for part one of this data table. These yellow cells right here are where you're going to record those short distances, those intervals. Over here, the length of the wires where you sum up all the previous intervals. I hope that makes sense. And by the way, in a spreadsheet, you want to be very careful, especially in lab two, whenever you're using the spreadsheet, if it's a calculation, put away your calculator, use the spreadsheet to do the calculation, and don't type numbers. Instead, click on cells. So in this cell, I would just simply hit equals that cell. In the next one, I would say equals the previous cell plus this one to the left. And then I could actually take that formula and fill it down because it's always going to be looking at the previous summation plus the new interval. Again, these yellow cells right here are for the short incremental lengths. This column right here is for the length that's getting longer that matches the resistance measurement. So be careful when you're doing that part of the data table. And by the way, I think there's um, maybe a missing unit right here. And if we were going to fix that, we would just put it at the top here. Um, the wire area is written on the board 0.03 millimeters squared for the top wire that is the skinniest, the, the thinnest wire. The next data table down here is for finding the resistance and the cross-sectional area. And you're just going to measure the resistance for the entire length of these wires where each wire has a greater cross-sectional area. On the data table, there's some green cells. And those green cells are trying to lend themselves to helping you build a function to find the slope and the intercept for that master plot. Remember R versus L over A, where the slope is equal to rho, the resistivity. On the spreadsheet, there's a sheet here that describes least squares fit. This is the method that spreadsheets use when they calculate the slope and the intercept of a line. The job of the least squares fit these two equations. There's the slope equation and below here there's the y-intercept equation. The job of the least squares fit is to try to minimize the distance, the spread that all the data points have from the line. If you draw a best fit line and you could find the distances, all these distances. So I didn't say count the data points below and make them the same as the data points above. What we're trying to do is find the line that causes all these distances to be minimized. Okay? Or the distance found above will be the same as the distances found from below the line. Okay? There's, there's one line that, that minimizes all those. And that's called the least squares fit method. This is the equation to find the slope using a method called least squares fit. K stands for the number of data points. And then this example, in this experiment, we have five data points. So K would be five, but you're not going to type in five. When you create this formula in your spreadsheet, you're going to click wherever the five is written. XI and YI, I is the incremental counter. 
See, it goes from 1 to 5 to k. x, y means take the product of the x and the y. What's the x? r. No, excuse me. The x, sorry about that. The x value is L over a, and the y value is r. So you've got five r values and five L over a values, and you're going to take r number one and multiply it by L over a number one. And you're going to add that to r2 times L over a2. So you're going to take that product. And then once you're done with all those different products, you'll have five products, you sum them up. And then you take that sum and you multiply it by five. And then you subtract the sum of all the L over A values, five of them, times the sum of all the R values. And then you divide by, here's that K again, you're going to square all the L over A values and sum them up. And then you're going to square the L over A values that are already summed. Take the difference in those two, and that's your denominator. If you look at the denominator for the intercept, it's the exact same denominator. So once you've found the denominator, you can just copy that and paste it into your other equation. On your sheet, You have the pieces that go into that equation. See, here's the x, y. It's the product. You're going to take r times l over a. And then here's the x's squared. So you're going to take the l over a and square it and put it here. And then just fill those down. It won't take long. And then right here, you just sum up all the squares. And then you can actually take that sum and fill it with the lower right corner. Just fill it to the left. And that's going to sum up all the cells above it. And if you study these right here, these are all the pieces in that equation. And down here at the bottom is where you're supposed to generate that equation. So I want you to click here and type equals and then just click on the values above to try to reproduce the least squares fit for the slope. And then right here, it's going to have the same denominator, but find the y-intercept. And what we should find is this slope and this intercept match out to the two or three decimal places that you're reporting match what's found on your plot. Okay, and this is how your instructor is going to know if you actually use the spreadsheet to do this calculation. Hopefully you don't cheat and you don't just write down the slope and intercept from your plot. Okay? The, the point is for you to have some experience with the least squares fit method of finding slope and intercept. But those are not just magical numbers. There's a, a process that's gone through to find them. In conclusion, I want you to think about resistivity and, and how it impacts you. Think about the wiring in your house. Is it aluminum or copper? If it's, if it's aluminum, you might want to seriously consider finding out if there's too much power draw, if there's temperature being generated in those walls. I, I remember a time I used to teach elementary school, and it was an underprivileged student school, so these students came from low-income families. And once a month, the parents would get together and they'd have a lunch for the kids on a Friday. It was a cold lunch normally because there was no um, cafeteria or nor kitchen in that building. And one particular month, the parents got a really bright idea. They said, let's give the kids a hot lunch. Let's even give them some choices, sloppy joes and spaghetti and something else. And everybody bring two things, bring a crock pot and an extension cord. And so that Friday came along and... I noticed the parents showing up with crock pots and extension cords, and by extension cords I mean those really cheap ones that are really thin and they're um, typically brown or white, you know which ones I'm talking about, and, and they just have, they don't have a ground plug, and at the other end they have three places to plug things in. And so believe it or not, all the way down the hallway of that school, there was one plug at the end of the hallway and the extension cord would go to here and there'd be two crock pots plugged in and then another extension cord and then two crock pots and another extension cord 
do you understand the problem with what they've done? One problem is they have a really long length. So what happens to the resistance? And another problem is they've used a very, very small cross-sectional area wire. So what happens to the resistance? Yeah, the fire department came shortly before lunch because everybody was out at recess and a fire started at one of those junctions. It got too hot because the resistance was too great. So it's very important. This resistivity is not just some strange topic that has no relevance. If you look at contractors who build houses and they have big, huge saws, normally what you'll see is a big, huge cable that runs the electricity. Why do you think they use that big cross-sectional area 